Merry Christmas, everyone. I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library, and today we're going to read Little Red Sleigh. Little Red Sleigh is written by Aaron Gendelsberger and illustrated by Elizaveta Tretyakova. Let's see what happens in Little Red Sleigh. In a quiet corner of a cozy Christmas shop, there was a little red sleigh as bright as Christmas morning. She wasn't very big and she wasn't very fast and she was very young for a sleigh. But deep down inside her strong, sweet heart, Little Red had a big dream. She longed to become Santa's big red sleigh. Everyone in the shop told Little Red that her dream would never come true. It was impossible. She was too small, too slow, much too young. She couldn't fly, they said. So how could she possibly be Santa's sleigh? Little Red wondered if these things might be true. Was she too small, too slow, too young? But she believed deep in her heart that she could fly. Through the sky, she would soar like a bird. She could learn anything. She could be anything. And this Christmas, she was going to prove it. She would travel to the top of the world find Santa Claus, and show everyone what she was made of. So, as winter fell, Little Red went north. Here she goes, going out of the store, leaving her, her snowman toy friends behind. Her journey was very difficult. She dragged herself through mud and grime. She crossed rickety bridges and braved treacherous paths. Soon, she started to worry she wouldn't make it to the North Pole before Christmas. Then, she found some train tracks. Where are you headed? said a friendly train. The North Pole, said Little Red. Off to see the big man, eh? Well, climb aboard, puffed the train. Little Red hopped onto the train, and they chugged quickly down the line. Chugga, 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 chugga. You have so many cars, Little Red said. I wish I were as big and fast as you. I wasn't always so big and fast, said the train. When I started out, I just had two stock cars. I worked up and down these tracks for a long time before they gave me a third. Then I earned a fourth, a fifth, and so on. Oh, I can't wait to be as big as you, said Little Red. The train laughed. Be patient, Little Sleigh. Life builds up one car at a time. As they steamed north, the ground gradually changed from softly rolling hills to vast icy mountains. After many, many miles, Train slowed down and stopped at a station. This is as far as I go, he said, but over the ledge you'll find Yellow Truck, who can help you go further. Oh, thank you, said Little Red. There she goes, off on her own. As she slid over the hill, she saw a bright yellow truck loaded with Christmas trees. Hello said Little Red Sleigh. Can you show me the way to the North Pole? Happy to, said Yellow Truck. I'm headed that way myself to deliver these Christmas trees to the big man. Hop on. In the truck, Red Sleigh snuggled between trees surrounded by the sweet scent of pine. Mm, I love that smell. Yellow Truck drove down the narrow road, rounding curves, dodging holes, and gliding smoothly over bumps. 
Wow, said Little Red. I wish I could drive like you do. Well now, said Yellow Truck. I wasn't always so. Used to be no one thought I could do deliveries. Then one winter, I took a load of trees up north. It was just a few. But the next time I got more trees, then more and more, life seems to build up that way, just one tree at a time. Is that the same advice we got from the train? The train was saying, builds up one car at a time. The truck says one tree at a time. What are they trying to say? Things don't all happen at once, do they? We don't suddenly get big. We don't suddenly get our dreams. We work at them. We work and we grow. And as we grow and we work, things we, what am I going with here? <laughs> As we grow and we work, we get toward our goals and we get bigger. Things happen just a little at a time. That afternoon, snow began to fall. Ice covered the roads. Yellow truck's tires slipped and slid. His windshield wipers ran faster and faster as the snow fell harder and harder. We'll have to pull over, hollered yellow, hollered yellow truck. Little Red could barely hear him for the whipping wind. She closed her eyes and held tight. She feared that if she flew off the truck, she would be lost. Then she would never find the North Pole. When they stopped, Little Red carefully opened her eyes. Snow was still swirling. But through it, she saw lights twinkling, red, green, blue, and white. Was it the North Pole? Had they finally made it? Do you see Santa Claus? asked Little Red. She strained her eyes, but she could see nothing through the blur of the falling snow. I'm sorry, said Le Yellow Truck. We didn't make it to the North Pole. We have to stay here until the storm lets up. Little Red nestled deep in the bed of the Christmas trees, thankful for the shelter, but she watched the snow pile up and up and her heart felt heavy. She'd come so far and she was nearly there. Oh, no. She had come so far and it was nearly Christmas. How would she ever get to the North Pole now? Little Red fell asleep, sniffling and wishing for Santa. Here she is, stuck on the back of the yellow truck outside of this town filled with lights. In the morning, the sun shone high and bright. The storm was over. Happy Christmas Eve, Little Red said. We'll get moving soon to deliver the trees on time, right? Afraid not, said Yellow Truck. My tires are stuck tight. I can't go anywhere today, but you should take a look at town. I'll keep an eye on you from here. You never know what you'll find when you look around someplace new. Little Red thanked Yellow Truck and slid off the trees, out of the back and down to the street. Here she goes climbing off the truck. She hadn't gone very far when a pair of mitten hands suddenly picked her up. Oh, wow, a sleigh, said a little girl in a purple parka as she hugged Little Red to her chest and held on tightly as she ran down the street and up to the top of a hill. The little girl sat on Little Red and then Little Red was just the right size for the little girl. Together, they fell down the hill. Oh, together, they flew down the hill again and again, sledding through the snow. Soon, other children joined in. Little Red played all day, helping each child soar through the air, watching their faces light up with joy. This is what it feels like to fly. I'm doing it, said Little Red. Her heart was bursting with pride. At supper time, the girl in the purple parka 
There she is. You see her right there? The girl in the purple parka brought Little Red back home. When Little Red closed her eyes that night, at the end of Christmas Eve, she felt like she was still flying. The next day on Christmas morning, Little Wet Red woke up and sighed. Ah, she hadn't made it to the North Pole. She hadn't met Santa Claus. And now it was too late. Little Red was very disappointed and she started to cry. <laughs> but then she noticed a small red envelope tucked beside her and it was addressed to her. Who do you think it's from? What do you think? Dear Little Red, Christmas is a time for giving. Each year I deliver treasures to children around the world, hoping to bring them joy. But sometimes I need a little help. Yesterday, you delivered Christmas joy to many children. Thank you so much. You made each of those children very happy, and you did it just by being yourself. You are a very special sleigh indeed. I could really use someone like you up here at the North Pole. As a special thank you, you are cordially invited to visit me in the North Pole next year as we prepare for the holidays. Merry Christmas. Love, Santa Claus. Little Red couldn't believe her eyes. The North Pole with Santa Claus, her dreams had come true. Just then, the little girl in the purple parka bounded down the stairs. Little Red was ready. At last, she understood what she was meant to do. She would build her life by spreading joy. One child at a time. So it's just like what the train and the truck had said. We build up our life one thing at a time. Lots of small steps as we grow and we learn. Merry Christmas! The end. Great listening, everyone. Thank you all for coming today. And if you are nearby, don't forget we have story times on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 1030 in person. I can't wait to see you there or back here. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.